In the last video, we arrived at an expression for the probability of an atomic system transitioning from an initial state I to a final state F due to uh, electromagnetic radiation that was both polarized and monochromatic. In this video, we're going to specialize that discussion to consider the interaction of an atom with thermal electromagnetic radiation. The challenges that this introduces is that thermal radiation is both incoherent or unpolarized. So we'll have to consider several different directions of the electric field. Uh, and thermal radiation is in general, not monochromatic. And this means that it can in general have a range of frequencies, omega rather than just a single frequency as we previously considered. This fact is usually captured by the fact that thermal radiation has a particular uh, energy density. Per unit frequency. Which we're going to write as u of omega. And this typically has uh, a form that looks like this. It has some distribution of energy density as a function of the angular frequency. And what this means is that we'll eventually have to an average over the range of possible frequencies in the spectrum of thermal radiation, as well as uh, average over all possible directions of the electric field due to the fact that it's unpolarized. Our first step to incorporating the characteristics of thermal radiation, we're going to look at a particular mode so we're only look, looking at one particular frequency in our spectrum, which has some energy density u of omega j. And even though for a particular uh, frequency, the electric field can have a range of directions, uh, we're going to call a single mode as, uh, an electric field component that has a particular angular frequency, a particular energy density per unit frequency, and a particular direction. In this case, the probability of transitioning due to this mode, which we'll denote by the superscript j, is in general a function of the frequency the direction of the electric field and the time for which the uh, perturbation is applied. This is four times the electric field amplitude. We're going to write it as a function of omega j because we're eventually going to relate this electric field amplitude to the energy density. And it will have different amplitudes depending on the frequency you're looking at over h bar squared. times the square modulus of the matrix element of the dipole moment operator dotted with the particular direction of the electric field mode we're looking at. And uh, the oscillatory term over here. So the first characteristic we want to incorporate is relating the electric field amplitude of our electromagnetic field with the energy density uh, per unit frequency of thermal radiation. So we want to express E naught of omega j squared in terms of this energy density per unit frequency of thermal radiation. And to do that, we're going to use some 
some concepts from electromagnetism for which uh, from which we know that for an electromagnetic field the electric field component has an energy density u subscript e which is in this case a function of omega j and t given by epsilon naught uh, e squared t omega j over two. The magnetic field component also has an energy density, which we'll call ub of omega j t. This is one over two mu naught e squared t omega j. Epsilon naught here is the permittivity of free space and mu naught is the permeability of free space. We can relate these two energy densities from the fact that the speed of light in vacuum is equal to one over the square root of mu naught times epsilon naught. This is epsilon. From which we can conclude that the energy density in the electric field is the same uh, amount as the energy density in the magnetic field. Therefore, the total energy density in an electromagnetic field, which is uh, in general equal to the sum of the electric field component and magnetic field component of the energy density. Since these two are equal, this is just equal to twice the energy density of the electric field. where this uh, e squared t omega j is equal to this. We're typically interested in the time average of this quantity because whenever we take a measurement, we have to uh, detect something for a given amount of time. For, uh, in which case the temporal changes will average out. So the time average of the energy density of an electromagnetic field is four epsilon naught e naught squared, there's a square over here times the time average of cosine squared omega j t. The time average of cosine squared is one half. So we're left with the energy density of an electromagnetic field, time averaged, uh, is equal to two times the permittivity of free space times the amplitude of the electric field component. So we have to relate this energy density in a generic electromagnetic field with the energy density of uh, thermal electromagnetic radiation. For which we said, uh, took on the following form. We're looking at a particular frequency, which gives us a particular energy density per unit frequency. Uh, we previously derived the energy density of an electromagnetic field. This U omega J is an energy density per unit frequency. So to arrive at only an energy density, 
we're going to look at this quantity over a range of frequencies d omega. And this, as this will give us the energy density of thermal radiation over this range of frequencies d omega. This quantity and the energy density of an electromagnetic field time average uh, have, are equivalent. And we said that this was equal to two epsilon naught amplitude of the electric field squared. We're going to add as a function of omega j now, because depending on which frequency we're looking at, uh, the electric field should have a different amplitude because you have different energy densities. So we arrived at the fact that the electric field amplitude of thermal radiation is equal to one over two epsilon naught, the energy density at this particular frequency over a range of frequencies, d omega. Okay, so this is electric field amplitude as a function of the energy density. Plugging this back into our expression for the probability of transitioning due to a particular uh, mode of radiation, which we're noting by the superscript J. Uh, this is now as a function of omega J as well. So we replace E naught squared by this new expression. and our usual sine squared term. This is uh, omega j. We can simplify this down a little bit more to get two u omega j epsilon h bar squared. Okay, so this is our new expression where we've incorporated the energy density of thermal radiation for the probability of transition between two states. This is still only for uh, monochromatic light because we're only considering one particular frequency omega j and of a particular polarization or a particular direction for the electric field and had J. So in the next video, we're going to generalize uh, our discussion to take into account the range of frequencies of thermal radiation, as well as the range of directions of the electric field due to the unpolarized nature of thermal radiation.